back. We're live. We're here with uh, the one o'clock rock on a given Thursday with Global Connections. Carlos uh, Juarez, uh, who is in Mexico with his guest, Gerardo Rodriguez uh, from the University of the Americas Puebla, UDLA in Mexico. Welcome to the show, you guys. Welcome. Aloha to you all. Aloha. So, Carlos, uh, you know, can you can you take it from here and I'll chime in from time to time and conduct this show just as if you were here in Hawaii? Absolutely. And thank you, Jay. We look forward to this. Uh, I'm delighted to, to welcome the guest who's joining me here in Mexico. I'm in Mexico City at the moment. And uh, it's Professor Gerardo Rodriguez Sanchez Lara. But we're going to keep it short. Gerardo Rodriguez. And of course, for me, it's just Gerardo. Uh, but Gerardo is a, basically a professor here at the University of the Americas. Uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that institution in a moment. But he's also an academic coordinator for a center here, a center for the study of impunity and justice. Very important topic, especially for a country like Mexico that's in a transition, democratic, uh, very important things that need to happen. And these centers play a vital role that we're going to discuss. Uh, and uh, so I'm delighted to be joined here, Gerardo. Thank you, Gerardo. Um, and uh, he is, as I said, a professor here, uh, teaches in the Department of International Relations and Political Science. And perhaps, Gerardo, if you could just say first an initial few words about your own institution, uh, the University of the Americas, it's a very unique institution here in Mexico, located in Puebla, uh, about an hour east of Mexico City. And it's an institution that has always had a very strong international focus. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, even part of what you're doing is really connecting to the world as well. But tell us a little bit about your university and even yourself and some of the work you do there. Thank you, Tom. Hi, uh, to Hawaii from Mexico City. Hi. Well, the University of Americas Puebla is one of the oldest private universities here in Mexico. It was founded 75 years ago, and is the oldest uh, university with the uh, International Relations Department and career also, and is uh, is located at Puebla, as as Carlos told you. Uh, Puebla is one of the nicest city near Mexico City, so uh, you, you have to be here. In, it is not that cute like Hawaii, but it's really, really uh, cute. Um, it's one of the most important colonial uh, cities in Mexico City, where we we defended from the uh, from the French army from Napoleon the Third. That's right, the famous Cinco de Mayo battle that we, we celebrate right. in the U.S. too much as a commercial, you know, you know, party. But here, it's a very important historical event. It is in this city of Puebla that this famous battle took place. That's right. And we have the, the biggest pyramid in Mexico, so it will be great uh, for having you here. And uh, in, at the university, we created a center of study of impunity and justice. And we created the first... Uh, global impunity index. Uh, previously, some universities tried to, to make this this index, but they didn't have the information. Fortunately, the United Nations, the United Nations Office on Crime and Drugs, uh, created a database that we used to create this this index, and we launched this index uh, recently last year with information of 59. Uh, countries that they gave the, their information to the United Nations, so we c we can uh, have the information to build this this index. Mm. And let me let me weigh in here, I guess, uh, just for some of our you know listeners to understand the importance of impunity. When we're talking about countries, especially that are in transition, one of the challenges is the need to in well to institutionalize or formalize you know judicial systems, rule of law. The ability for governments to obviously control violence and you know provide security, and this word impunity, which is in the center, of course, refers to maybe maybe you can tell us a little bit about what that means, and what he's referring to the index. They actually publish now uh, annual index of global impunity, as it's called. They have one publication which focuses on Mexico, and the second one is a global one, looking at impunity challenges and judicial you know challenges worldwide a very important initiative, but maybe speak a little bit first about what is impunity, why it's important. Okay. Um, in Mexico, we have heard that the principal problems are corruption, insecurity, state of law, 
but uh, the real problem is impunity. Impunity in clear term, terms is, is a crime that is not punished. So, uh, what we are seeing in Mexico that there's a lot of corruption, yes, a lot of, of insecurity, yes, violence. But the real problem, the mother of all these problems is that the, the crimes are not being punished. So, in a, in a modern state where there are not a real good institution on security, on justice, on human rights, where the crimes are being punished, all the, the rest of the problems will be increasingly uh, enemies for, for, for the state. So, impunity is the mother for all these uh, problems. Yeah, it's really, really well, interesting. It's a flip Jay, side. Jay, you want to maybe add anything here to clarify? Yeah, I, it's a, this is all interesting in the sense that it's a flip side and perhaps a, a broader measure than just corruption. Um, it's, it's the failure of the government to require people to follow the law. And it, it's broader right. than any one particular kind of law, criminal law, civil law. Um, and I think it's also it's a measure of the community, whether government is working properly in that community as part of the social compact. What it suggests to me, and I'd be interested in whether this is part of your, you know, your, your project, um, is that governments here in Mexico, maybe in many places around the world, have, have lost touch. Uh, the social compact is like unraveling. And so uh, this, this, this index... Um, would indicate whether people are following the law. And, and if you have a lot of unraveling, if you have a lot of impunity, it means the law becomes theoretical uh, and people are not really following it and society is not really working in that place. So wh what are you finding? What are your findings, um, Dr. Rodriguez? I mean, yeah, how does Mexico compare against other countries? Sure. How does it compare against the U.S.? Okay. Um, the worst... Uh, top five impunity states are uh, the Philippines in the 59 uh, list, then Mexico, unfortunately, then Colombia, the Russian Federation, and Turkey. And what we found is that the best uh, countries that are making well about uh, confronting impunity are the, the new uh, European Union countries from uh, Central and Eastern Europe, like uh, Croatia, Romania, Bulgaria, and also the, the, the European countries are in the first uh, 20, uh, 20 uh, part of the list. The United States is not in the top thir uh, 30 uh, countries of this list, is more or less of the 35 uh, uh, number uh, ranking in the ranking list. What we, what we found is that if there's a lot of uh, security problems, crimes, and there is not enough judges, the, the prison system is overwhelmed, we'll, we're going to have impunity because at the end of the day, uh, the police can have some corruption to give the give the person that committed crimes to the, to the ju judicial system. The judges will not have the enough time and the people and the structure to manage all these crimes. So um, our index is like is like a pool. If you push one part of the pool, for example, the judicial system but the security system is, is not enough well, well kept and also the prison system is overwhelmed, you're, you are going to have impunity. And the, the last part that we included in the impunity index is the human rights uh, structural oh, dimension. Sure, sure. What, what do, do this uh, mean? If, if a country has judicial executions, political imprisonment, torture. This is, an, this is a measure that you have impunity in your country. Normally, this kind of uh, crimes uh, towards humanity uh, are an index of impunity in that country. 
Yeah. So how, how do you make the poll? I mean, wh what kind of data do you get? How do you get it? Um, how do you correlate, you know, and, and analyze it? Um, mm -hmm. What's the process like? Can you talk about that? Yeah, and maybe if I can ask, uh, I'm not sure if Zuri has on hand, but uh, we have one slide that shows a picture of the, uh, there's an English version now available and a website that's listed as well. Uh, this in, uh, this is, it's called the Index of Global Impunity. And uh, what I'm showing you here is the Spanish language version, but there is an English language run available on the internet uh, at a website uh, for this center. Uh, and uh, if we have a chance to show it there, uh, we may not have think, the chance. You know, Gerardo, for, we'll speak to this in a moment, but this is a critical role where you have probably a, a, an important role for the international community to help uh, international or intergovernmental organizations like the United Nations and other regional groups. And obviously in Europe, they have many institutions that play a role here. But gathering information, putting it together, and that's part of what this task is. Uh, you know, how do you organize this? But more to your point, let me let Gerardo speak to what type of information is is it contained in the index? Where is it gathered? What are some of the methods you know that are used? All the information is uh, from the United Nations, from the UNODC, is the United Nations Office on Drug and Crime, is based on Geneva. And from the last five years, they have uh, this information available. That's, uh, that's our main uh, source of information. Uh, what, would, what do we measure, for example, the, the police per uh, 100,000 uh, persons in a country? So we can measure either the United States as a big country or a small country like Malta. We also have the number of judges, the number of uh, inmates in prisons, also the, the police personnel that is, is, is securing the, the, the prisons in the countries. Also, we are mentioning all the, the crimes, the homicides, uh, and other crimes that this database has uh, in an open government uh, manner to, to be compared all these 59 countries. But what is really uh, important to say is that 134 countries did not give this information to the United Nations. So we put these 134 countries in what we call the impunity, the impunity countries that did not uh, um, give this information to the United Nations. Mm. So, but in some countries, you know, the whole notion of... Um um, corruption and uh, failure to follow the law, failure to enforce the law, that's, that's politically um, troublesome. Uh, yeah. If I give you a country with lots of torture and uh, people in jail and uh, inhuman things being done to them, the government, for example, doesn't like that much. They don't want to hear about it. Doesn't that put the poll at a risk in any country which, is, which has got a high uh, quotient of impunity, uh, doesn't it put the pollster at risk? Well, it, it is the, as you touch on right there, these issues are inherently delicate, sensitive, controversial, difficult to measure, uh, and indeed the worst violators are going to, you know, they're going to be reluctant to make themselves look bad, so they're either going to, you know, budge or not provide the information, or maybe spin it in different ways. Um, nevertheless, it doesn't mean we can't and shouldn't be doing this. And so it is a, a task. Uh, I would I would add that you know, while this is a good example of a, of a non-governmental organization that's gathering this information, you know, it's part of a larger community uh, in, in sort of what we call global governance that you have watchdog groups, that different NGOs, different or IGOs, as we might call the intergovernmental groups. And this is a task uh, that really is putting pressure on government to respond because when they you know, are confronted with this, they, they have to respond. They, they have no choice. Uh, you have groups maybe like Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International, that are well-known names. Uh, they will put out reports, and government must respond to them. Uh, they're put under the fire. So one of the roles in PASS is, is a watchdog function. Uh, and, of course, aside from these NGOs, you have the critical role of journalists. And I know he mentioned many different uh, data, whether it's homicide crime, even journalists. You've got a country like Mexico here where it can be a dangerous job to be snooping around and asking about the uh, drug cartels. 
Uh, so this is not easy stuff, and it's uh, messy, it's uh, contentious, but it's work that has to be done. Yes, I absolutely agree. We're going to take a short break. Uh, that's Carlos Juarez, uh, our host here on Global Connections, uh, with his guest, uh, Professor Gerardo Rodriguez of the University of uh, the Americas at Puebla, UDLA in Mexico. And we're discussing impunity as a threat to Mexican democracy. And I'd like to get into that right after this break. How does impunity threaten democracy? We'll be right back. Welcome to thinktechhawaii.com. This is Johnson Choi, your host. The topic is Asia in Review. We do it on a monthly basis on Thursday at 11 o'clock. Be sure to check the schedule. See you. Hello, and I'm Patrick Bratton. Please join me for Global Connections every Thursday at 1 p.m. where we talk with a variety of guests about various international uh, issues, historical issues, both here in Hawaii and abroad, range from security, human rights, ethics, and all sorts of other things. So please join me. I look forward to talking with you and seeing some of my guests. Aloha, everybody. My name is Mark Shklov. I'd like you to join me for my program, Law Across the Sea, on thinktechhawaii.com. Aloha. We're back. We're live uh, by uh, Skype uh, with Carlos Suarez and Gerardo Rodriguez, who join us uh, from Mexico in a discussion of impunity, impunity as a threat to Mexican democracy. So can we talk about that, Carlos and uh, Gerardo? Can we talk about how impunity and, say, a high quotient of impunity in a given country affects the, the institution of democracy in that country? Yeah, and I'll turn to Gerardo in a moment to give us some of the sort of micro level specifics. Uh, I want to just make, make uh, clear that, you know, we have a country here in Mexico that is a very good example of a, a country in transition. Uh, it's a country that for actually paradoxically many years was a very stable political system. It was an authoritarian system, no doubt. Uh, that is, it had a, a very politically controlled environment, uh, limited competition very strong control over many, many parts of the system, if you will. Uh, and about 15, 16 years ago, Mexico would witness an important transition. It elected its first opposition president from a political party that had ruled for over 70 years. So democracy is coming. It is certainly changing, but it's coming also with some challenges because uh, as we speak now, Mexico is confronting uh, some violent uh, you know, drug cartels, as we know, but even beyond that, some of the issues that we want to speak to about impunity are beyond just the drug crisis. That's certainly one element, but a lot deeper than that, you have maybe questions of legitimacy of the government, uh, the corruption that is, you know, deeply embedded. Uh, so let me have uh, Hernando give us maybe some insights on how does this issue play out in Mexico, especially at the very local level, because ultimately democracy is not just this big macro system, it is, but it's also happening at the state, local, municipality level, and that's where we really see a lot of, uh, to understand these issues. So if you can add some. Yeah, Carlos. Thank you. Um, you uh, say some critical issues, for example, for the uh, democracy in Mexico, for example, the problem of the local governments. But we, we can manage uh, to have this discussion of impunity to many other countries. When, when uh, small crimes are not being punished and also the high level corruption crimes, for example, when one president is involved in, in, in an issue of corruption with the private, with the private sector, all, all, all the society are living in an uh, impunity, in, in impunity system. So they're not in deeps to um, to be in, in, in a law, in a rule of law environment, there will be no investment, also incentives for the for the entrepreneurs. And um, the problem, for example, in Mexico is that we have a federal government, like in the United States. The problem in Mexico is that we have 32 feudal kings, where they can manage to do whatever they they want to do. So the problem is really huge. So the the corruption. Is being like uh, like like state level institutionalized, so that's a problem from the impunity for democracy. And what we have also found in this in this index is that impunity is also really and deeply related with inequality. 
the most uh, inequality countries in the world has also the most uh, impunity index. What does this mean? That, for example, the, the justice is not going to be for, for the poorest people. The justice is going to be really, really uh, uh, it will be not cheap for, 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 the, for the people to be, to have a, a legal uh, judgment, for example. So it is critical. So that, that's why democracy, inequality, in, in, impunity, corruption is, is deeply related. Yes. I was going to ask you about that. You know, uh, this reminds me of Rudy Giuliani when he was mayor <laughs> of the city of New York. Uh, he, he took a policy where every single jaywalker would get prosecuted, that the smallest crimes, the smallest shoplifting crimes would get, nobody would get off. Now, you know, you wouldn't over punish them, but nobody would be able to walk away impugn. And he found, and the city found, that by doing that, the murder rate was reduced because people all of a sudden got to decide that, they, that it's better off if they follow the rules. And I mean, there's a huge um, sort of sociological, psychological, uh, you know, component of all of that, but it was quite successful and I don't think it's been notably successful, you know, in other places since then. But isn't, doesn't it suggest to you um, that impunity should be at all levels and if people feel, or rather punity, if, if I can look at the flip side, <laughs> that, that if, if punity applies everywhere in, in big ways and in little ways, um, then maybe that's a fix. Maybe that's part of the solution here. Yeah. Well, um, what you're uh, saying us is the no broken window theory of Giuliani. So, you are not going to permit that a broken window will be at your community, at your school. So, but that's not the solution. If you punish only small crimes and not the, the higher crimes, for example, for the govern, governors or the presidents or the congressmen, during, in, in, during that impunity trap. So, if you only punish the small crimes, for example, handling small, small amounts of drug, for example, and you get a, a, a huge amount of uh, prisoners, inmates in your prisons, that will collapse your security system. So our index um, punish that kind of system where you, you, you only have a lot, a lot of, of uh, prisoners, your prisons, and you are not using other crimes like financial crimes, political crimes. So you have to be really careful about having this kind of uh, judicial and security systems. That's why maybe the United States and that's why the United States ah. is not at the, at the lowest, lowest levels of impunity because we are seeing that your Christians are really overwhelmed. Your judges are really overwhelmed. The, the, the the police men at the local level uh, are having a lot of problems handling on these judicial and security issues. Well, let's look at it from the other side. Let's look at Xi Jinping. Xi Jinping is on a tear against corruption. And uh, a lot of people are going to jail for corruption in China. And I, I suppose on the one hand, he really wants to stamp out corruption. On the other hand, it's a, it's a good scapegoat to keep him in power. Uh, so it was a combination of benefits there. But is, is the Xi Jinping approach helpful? Uh, if, I, if I look at my leadership, I look at anybody who is violating either the spirit or the letter of the laws relating to corruption, even at high levels, um, and I, I punish them or put them to death, is that going to help? Well, let me just weigh in here and say that obviously authoritarian governments or systems, maybe as you just alluded to in the case of China, they are very effective at controlling uh, security and violence. And, and we've heard actually in just recent days, I think Trump was praising Saddam Hussein. Well, he was you know, tough on the terrorists. No doubt, if you have a system where you can control violence, and authoritarian governments can do it quite well. Mexico did it very efficiently for decades. The challenge is, you know, over time, people 
put pressure on governments. They want more accountability. They want more fairness. They want justice. And but justice, we mean that it's you know it's the little guy, not just the rich people getting away with everything. The problem is democracy. It's a messy system of government. It's it's not easy. Uh, and um, you know these ch issues we're talking about are real challenges. But failure to address them. Uh, or, or inability to create a system that is fair and just for all leads to a crisis of legitimacy. The people don't trust government. So even as we speak now in Mexico, you have ongoing social movements and crises and conflicts, protest movements, and you know the people aren't going to be confident that the government is going to come through with the right, right answer if they see evidence of, of you know, past corruption. Uh, so very tough challenges. Yes, authoritarianism works but it also goes against our basic desire to want to have fairness openness democracy um where do we find the balance well that's our challenge but it's certainly we live in a world now where even the innovation technologies look at the news of the last you know 48 hours where we have more incidents in the u.s of, of police shootings you know cell phones and and you know video cameras on police uh, are now bringing us instantly things that in the past were just not quite apparent uh so we have to contend with this uh and you know we're, we're speaking less about the u.s today but these are challenges that our country and the u.s faces in terms of inequality of justice and the treatment of you know different groups uh, a country like mexico again it's a paradox as a lot of developing countries are it's a wealthy country it's a country with you know a lot of uh, positive aspects in the culture but part of it is also very deeply challenged, the inequality, the injustice, uh, the history of impunity, really, that is deep, deeply embedded. Yeah, and so uh, where do we go from here? Well, I would just turn, you know, this is where the role of civil society groups becomes important. You have to have people calling uh, of, uh, their governments uh, to account for actions. And when things are wrong, they have to be able to highlight it. They have to be able to, you know, make it apparent to the world. Um, I want to just, you know, underscore that, how important an organization like this putting out an index, uh, why is it needed? Well, we need to, to keep a dialogue going. We need to share the information. And we also need to learn what is it other countries are doing that might be working. Um, he made a reference to some of the countries in Central and Eastern Europe, post-communist countries that had a history of authoritarian repression. Now, not all of them are perfect, but many of them are doing much better these days. Now, what explanation again not easy but some of it is they have support from the european union as as weak and troubled as it is these days it has been a very important part of helping to reform those judicial systems giving them better trained judges and you know judicial workers uh giving them examples of how how you can adjudicate uh, and otherwise address crime so there has been tremendous progress in some but as well, uh, steps back. I mean, democracy is an ongoing process, and even countries that are moving forward sometimes slip back. It's a very interesting subject and a very interesting index, and I'm so glad uh, that you're doing it and publishing it. I think over the, over the long term, it will have a, a salient effect on governments, especially uh, where there is a, a problem in impunity. I would also say, just in, in, in uh, my reaction, is that uh, the that the quotient of impunity is actually a quotient of how well the country, the democracy, is working. And if we find that it's not working so well because the quotient of impunity is high, then in every case uh, we'd be better advised to try to fix things. So this is a, vo a valuable contribution. Thank you so much, yeah. Gerardo Rodriguez. Thank you, Carlos. Wonderful to have this discussion. Talk again soon. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you. Aloha. Gracias. <laughs>